Hello and welcome to this session on some miscellaneous provisions found in Finance Bill 2021. My name is Ros Martin. Although this had been announced before the budget, we will just revisit the fact that all of the dividend tax rates will be increasing by 1.25% with effect from the 6th of April 2022. This means that the dividend ordinary rate is going up to 8.75%, the upper rate applying to those who are high rate taxpayers to 33.75% and the additional rate for additional rate taxpayers going up to 39.35%. The trust dividend rate will also be 39.35%. The dividend allowance will remain at £2,000 and because the Section 455 rate applying to loans to participators, which still remain outstanding nine months after the end of the accounting period, is linked to the higher rate dividend tax liability, this is also going to increase to 33.75% with effect for loans made after the 6th of April 2022. We can see an example where we have a director who takes a salary up to the lower earnings limit so that they do not actually pay any national insurance contributions and then takes the balance in dividends up to the basic rate threshold. In 2021, where the salary would be 8,840 and the balance of dividends would be 41,430, the tax payable would be £2,677.50. Obviously, some of the dividends fall within the basic rate band and then there is the dividend allowance to be knocked off, but that gives us the tax figure that is shown on the slide. In 2022-23, the salary would be £9,100 and the dividends £41,170. In that situation, the tax payable would be £3,123.75, which gives us an increase of £446.25 over the 2021-22 figures. Obviously, that the small increase in the lower earnings limit helps the taxpayer in that situation. Again, we already had announcements telling us that the national insurance rates would be increasing in 22-23 to incorporate the health and social care levy. And we have now had thresholds announced with small increases in the relevant national insurance thresholds being seen apart from the upper earnings limit. The upper earnings limit is frozen at £967 per week right up to the end of the 25-26 tax year as the upper earnings limit and indeed the upper profits limit for the self-employed is aligned with the higher rate threshold. And so the slide tells us what the limits are for next year compared to this year. And this slide confirms the rates of national insurance contributions which will apply. And we can see that the main class one rate for employees is going up to 13.25%. The supplementary rate, which applies above the upper earnings limit, will go up to 3.25%. Employers class one national insurance contribution rate goes up to 15.05%. For the self-employed, the main rate of class 4 goes up to 10.25%. The supplementary rate, which applies above the upper profits limit, goes up to 3.25%. There is a small increase in the class 2 rate for the self-employed, going up to £3.15 per week, but that is unaffected by the health and social care levy. Provisions are introduced in relation to reporting of disposals of property. So since 2015, non-resident individuals have had to pay tax first on residential property and then on non-residential and indirect holdings of UK property. Aligned with that change in the legislation was a necessity to submit a return of any disposal on which tax, or no, in fact, on any disposal. Since April 2020, UK resident individuals have had to report disposals of residential property. Now, they don't have to make a report if there is no tax to pay, and that's where the UK residence regime differs from the non-UK residence regime. 
Now, for both of those returns, the time limit was 30 days from the date of completion. Now, HMRC have been lobbied uh, to extend that time limit because difficulties are often encountered in actually submitting the return within that deadline. So the time limit for submitting these capital gains tax returns is extended to 60 days following completion. And that change takes effect for completions which take place on or after the 27th of October 2021, that is the day of the budget. There is also another technical amendment to the provisions, such that where a return is being made by a UK resident, such that it only needs to relate to residential property, but where the property being sold is mixed use, confirmation that you only need to make a return in relation to the residential part of the property. Now, that was assumed to be the case, but this clarifies the situation. So that might apply, for example, where somebody is, say, selling a shop with a flat over it. You have to work out the capital gain on the flat, but you just include the capital gain on the commercial aspect of it in the tax return as normal. HMRC have recently lost a case at the upper tribunal regarding their ability to issue discovery assessments to collect the high income child benefit charge. Now there have been a lot of tax cases on the high income child benefit charge relating to penalties but also in this instance whether or not the discovery provisions cover the high income child benefit charge. And the upper tribunal decided in the case of HMRC v Wilkes that HMRC could not use discovery provisions to collect this charge. Now HMRC are appealing that case to the Court of Appeal but they have decided they are going to change the legislation to put the issue beyond doubt. Now, this legislation is controversial because it has immediate effect and is also retrospective. However, if a taxpayer has appealed using the same arguments as were made in the Wilkes case, and that appeal was lodged with HMRC before the 30th of June 2021, which was the date on which the Wilkes decision was published, then HMRC will not issue a discovery assessment or will vacate any discovery assessments made to collect the high income child benefit charge. Now, it is unclear at this point whether HMRC will still stand by that if they do ultimately win the Wilkes case at the Court of Appeal or indeed at the Supreme Court but we will have to wait and see going forward what the position is there. They've also uh, amended the legislation to make it clear that they can issue discovery assessments in other areas where there has been suggestion that they are going to be challenged. So, for example, to levy tax on gift aid payments where insufficient tax has been paid by the donor and also to cover certain pension charges such as unauthorised scheme charges, annual allowance charges, lifetime charges and so on. They have also amended Section 7 of TMA 1970, which is the requirement to notify chargeability to income tax, such that it now explicitly includes a requirement to notify chargeability to the high income child benefit charge. This is a slightly strange provision, but it is one that makes it easier in certain circumstances for the government to change legislation. Now, we saw various easements to the tax provisions during the pandemic. So an introduction of an exemption where coronavirus testing was provided by employers, changes to the mechanism for claiming um, the costs of working from home and so on. Each of those actually required both primary and secondary legislation to be put in place and therefore the government needed to find parliamentary time to make sure that that legislation could be passed. And in fact, during the pandemic, there were some problems in getting that legislation enacted. Now, to a certain extent, it doesn't matter because HMRC can apply that legislation on a concessional basis, but it's not very straightforward. So what this legislation does is, is it gives HM Treasury a power to make temporary regulations in the event of a disaster or national emergency such that they do not require primary and secondary legislation to enact those regulations. It allows them to alter provisions relating to benefits, exemptions and allowable deductions for a period of up to two years. 
One thing that the provisions are very clear about is that this cannot be used to either increase or create a tax charge. And as I've said, it is limited in its application for a maximum period of two years. So there are protections there, though, as we've said, it is only going to be to the benefit of taxpayers. OK, so that brings us to the end of this session. Thank you for your time and goodbye.